Hi guys, in this video we will learn how to load balance our Node.js applications with a help of Nginx. So right now our DevOps landscape looks like on the picture here. Nginx that is in the middle is responsible for doing several important things. Firstly, it terminates HTTPS traffic. So it handles the encryption and then forwards all the traffic through the unencrypted channel to Node.js application. This way Node.js doesn't have to deal with certificate and encryption itself. Secondly, Nginx is responsible for serving static files. So what we want to do in this video is to give Nginx one more function. So now it will not just send traffic to a single Node.js instance, but instead it will be sending traffic to multiple Node.js instances running exactly the same application. This is called load balancing. So each Node.js app will have its portion of load and its portion of users to serve. Before we jump in and start fiddling with configs, let's figure out why do we need this load balancing thing at all. The first reason to implement load balancing is well to distribute the load, to balance the load. As you know, Node.js is single threaded in its core. So if you have a multi-core or multi-CPU server, the only way to fully utilize the potential of that server is to have multiple instances of Node.js running. But in our DigitalOcean server, we right now have just a single CPU core. This is one of the cheapest instances, so there is not many cores to play with. And you might be asking, why do you need load balancing in this case? Well, load balancing has a second very important feature, which is failover. So what happens if Nginx detects that one of the Node.js instances goes down, it will immediately redirect the traffic to the other instance. So while PM2 is busy restarting, respawning the instance that went down, your users will still be able to use the other instance. With this deployment strategy, your application will be significantly more fail-proof. Last but not the least, this kind of architecture will open the possibilities for zero downtime redeploy. So whenever we are redeploying the application, we can bring the application instances down one by one. So there will be at least a single app instance serving to users at any given point. And I will show you how to implement this kind of zero downtime redeploy strategy in the upcoming video. For the sake of this video, I have updated my little easy IO application. I have added the name of the node here. So each node.js process will have its own name that I can pass as an argument in the command line. And also as an argument, I can pass the port number to bind to. So this way it will be easy for me to start multiple easy IO processes on this same host and there will be no port conflicts. Just if you're curious, I used minimist in order to parse command line arguments and as usual, all the code for this app is in GitHub. So if you decide to give it a try, please go on, download the code and check it out. So I'm back again on my DigitalOcean host. The first thing that I want to do here is to update PM2 running configuration. So as you see right now, EasyIO is just a single instance that is running right now. But instead of having just one EasyIO instance listening to a single port, I now want to have multiple instances running. So PM2 stop let's just say all and PM2 delete all to remove all those applications from PM2 management. So now PM2 is not managing anything. Now, instead of having one instance, I want to launch two instances and I'll do this PM2 start and I'll give it name easy dash one and it will be main.js, still the same file. However, I now want to pass several command line arguments to this running applications. And to do that in PM2, I'll put dash dash here, and I can pass here the arguments. So name will be um, easy one. Again, this argument goes to my program, to my main.js. This argument name easy one goes to PM2. This is what it will display in its little grid. So don't confuse this ones. So and the port will be 8080. It is 8080 by default. I programmed it this way, but I just want to be explicit here and put it on port 8080. Let's launch it. It looks like it is going online. 
Now, since my application is listening to exactly the same port as before, let's just make sure that Nginx is still serving our files properly and application is still available. So you see here, now it's telling that the name of the node is easy one. So you see socket IO is reporting the name of the node and it will be important once we start working with load balancing. And if you click get name, it will be easy dash one forever. Okay, now following the same pattern, Let's launch another instance on port 8081. An instance will be called easy2, and here it will be easy2 again. So hit enter. Now we have two applications running. But since Nginx doesn't know about the existence of second instance, it will get no traffic. So it's a great time now to update Nginx configs. So I'll become a root again, logging off from my uh, user. And now let's find our Nginx configuration for Nanogram IO. And let's come here. Okay, so in order to tell Nginx that we have multiple nodes, we need to add one more block to this config on the level of server. So not inside of a server, but on the topmost level here. We add a config block that is called upstream. And we need to give this upstream a name. So in our case, it will be easy IO. And this name can be anything, doesn't really have to be easy IO. So any name will do. So inside of an upstream, you have to describe the servers that can handle the traffic for this application. And for me, there will be two servers. So server number one is local host 8080. Server number two will be local host 8081. So the next thing to do is to tell Nginx to use this upstream when it needs to redirect the traffic. So where are we redirecting traffic? Here, proxy pass. Here are two directives where we are redirecting something somewhere. So let's go here. And now instead of using local host 8080, we put the name of upstream here. So I'll put easy IO. So Nginx is smart enough to figure out this is a name of upstream. It is not a name of actual host. So it will take one of the servers described in this easy IO block and direct traffic there. And we'll do the same for the API. And let's remove localhost and add easy IO. Also, let's make formatting a little bit prettier. So awesome, we can save this config right now. And now let's do system CDL reload Nginx. So in previous videos, I was recommending to call a restart Nginx. Actually, this is a little bit better way to reload your Nginx configuration because it will not make Nginx process to stop and start again. It will just tell Nginx to reload the config and use the new configuration for the upcoming request. So this is much more graceful way to do that. And uh, I suggest you guys to use Nginx reload, uh, sorry, systemctl reload instead of restart. So see, it just one second and it reloaded. Let's go back to our application and let's restart this page. So heartbeats are broken, but well, you, you see already this pattern. You always have to handle web sockets separately, right? So heartbeats are not going anymore, but I will explain why and we'll fix it in just a second. But now let's play a little bit with the name. I'll get name, it's easy one. I'll get name, it's easy two, easy two, easy one. So as I'm clicking this button, I'm getting the traffic from the different Node.js instances that are running on this host. So load balancing is working perfectly except for web sockets that are not handled at this point at all. So let's try to fix this problem. So we're now back in our configuration and uh, let's look what is the problem with web sockets again. Uh, the problem is that WebSocket handshake process, so the process of establishing a connection between a browser and a server is a multi-step process. And obviously each of those steps, each HTTP call should go to the same server. However, right now what Nginx does, it just sends all the traffic randomly. So most of the times we will be unlucky and the first part of the uh, handshake process will go to this node instance and the second part will go to this node instance. Obviously handshake will not complete with this kind of situation and that's why we cannot establish WebSocket connections. Okay, so how to fix it? The easiest way is to tell Nginx to send the request from the same host, from the same client to exactly the same Node.js instance. And to do that, we just need to add one directive here that is called IP hash. So depending on the IP address of the client, he will be sent to one of the nodes here. 
and Nginx will make sure that all the subsequent requests will end up on the same node. So WebSockets should work now, right? Let's save Git and uh, reload Nginx config. Now let's see if that fixed the issue, right? So, and I already see it did fix the issue. So easy IO2, now node two was lucky to get the traffic. And if I click get name, you will see that I'm clicking this button over and over again, but easy IO2 is the node that handling the instance. If I would load this site now from the different IP address, from the different host, I might get to easy IO1 or easy IO2, depending on the mood of uh, Nginx at this particular point in time, right? But the thing is that same clients will go to the same instance of Node.js. This strategy is also often called sticky sessions, and you need sticky sessions if you want to have WebSockets. So let's see if this kind of strategy gave us any benefits in terms of failover. And when you're dealing with a failover, it's just best to try it with your own hands, try to put Node down and see what happens. And that's exactly what we'll do right now. So we are served by easy to Node, what happens if it goes down? I became again my unprivileged user here and PM2LS will give me easy to is up and let's bring it down PM2 stop easy dash two. Okay, so now it's stopped, it is down, it's not accepting any traffic. What happened here? Well, I was talking about it while I was bringing node down, socket IO already reconnected to the new node, to the other node. So socket IO traffic remained intact. And if I start getting name here, I will get easy one because the second node is down, Nginx is smart enough to not direct any traffic there at all. And your users are having seamless experience, right? Now let's try to bring this node back up and I'll write here start easy to and we'll see what will happen. So socket IO traffic will not change because WebSocket connection is established and there is no reason to break the connection that is already established. So this one goes to easy one node. However, if I start clicking get name here, you will see that I'm getting easy to the node that is back up and running. So you see this kind of funny properties, you can have the connection that ends up on one node and your APIs are served from the second nodes. So if you're designing the application that will work in a cluster, there will be more than one node serving the request from the user, you must make sure that your application is aware about it, right? So it's designed to work this way. For example, if I do broadcast on this node with socket IO, if I don't do any additional steps, it will only broadcast to the clients connected to that node, but not the other node, right? Also, you cannot assume that your uh, WebSocket traffic will be served by the same node as your API call. So with IP hash and bringing nodes up and down, you might might have a client that will end up with a picture like this. So the web socket traffic served from easy one. This, the API calls are served from easy two, just because of the way the connections have been established. Last but not the least, we need to update our script that does a redeploy, this little shell script that uh, sends the archive to our server and redeploys our app, the one that we built few videos before. So right now we are stopping and starting the application by its name with PM2. Let's just replace it to all. So instead of just stopping a single instance, we say PM2 stop all, PM2 start all again, okay? One important thing to notice is that this script will not give you zero downtime redeploys, right? So you are protected from the failures of the nodes, but you are not protected from your own deploys. Why? Well, because you're stopping everything and then while this housekeeping happens, right? While you are downloading the dependencies, extracting archives, etc., your nodes are down. In the upcoming videos, we will see how to improve the script. But at this point, this script will work and this is what I will commit to uh, a GitHub together with this version of the application for you to use. Finally, since we updated PM2 configuration, we now have two applications running instead of one. We need to remember to do PM2 save. Why we need to do that? Well, because if we restart the server, PM2 will take the data from the last save point and restore it in exactly the same way, right? So if I restart the server right now, PM2 will restore a single application like it was before this video. If I call PM2 save and restart my server, Again, now it will restore exactly the proper configuration. Great, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to click that subscribe button and like this video because in the next video we'll talk about zero downtime redeploys that will be largely based on this technique that we used in this video. So keep updated, subscribe to the channel and see you in upcoming videos. Bye!